Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Chanavalava Giri Varadari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Dhanaval Hava Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandhana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandhana Brajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tiravanachari Jamuna Tiravanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Dhanavallava Giri Varadhari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Dhanavallava Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandhana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandhana Brajajana Ranjana Chamana Tiravana Chari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Nama Nama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Nama Nama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Jayam Vishnu Pad Padamahamsa Purivajaka Acharya Asota Sata Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jayam Vishnu Pad Padamahamsa Purivajaka Acharya Asota Sata Sri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Asama Veta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All glories to the Asama Devotees All glories to the Asama Devotees all glories to the Assam devotees. All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Oh, 
Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we are reading from the fourth canto, chapter 19, text 36 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Kratu virat matam esha devishu dadavagraha dharma vyaktikaro yatra pakandar Indra Nir Mithai Kratur Virat Matam Esha Devishu Duravagraha Dharma Vyatikaro Yatra Pakandar Indra Nir Mithai Kratur Virat Matam Esha Devishu Duravagraha Dharmya Viktikaro Yatra Pakandar Indra Nirmitai Kratur, the sacrifice, Viram Matam, let it stop, Ishaha, this Devishu, amongst the demigods, Dharava Grahaha, addiction to unwanted things, Dharmya Vyatikaraha, violation of religious principles, Yatra, where Pakandai by sinful activities, Indra by the King of Heaven, Nirmitai manufactured. Translation Lord Brahma continued Stop the performance of these sacrifices, for they have induced Indra to introduce so many irreligious aspects. You should know very well that even amongst the demigods, there are, un there are many unwanted desires. Performed by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. There are many competitors in ordinary business affairs, and the Karmakanda chapters of the Vedas sometimes cause competition and envy amongst karmis. A karmi must be envious because he wishes to enjoy material pleasures to their fullest extent. That is the material disease. Consequently, there is always competition amongst karmis, either in ordinary business affairs or in the performance of yagya. Lord Brahma's purpose was to end the competition between Lord Indra and Maharaj Prithu. Because Maharaj Prithu was a great devotee, an incarnation of God, he was requested to stop the sacrifices so that Indra might not further introduce irreligious systems, which are always followed by criminal-minded people. Om um,
Jnana-timirandasya Jnananjana-salakaya Chakshurunmilitam yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Gurum Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishnakam Vitamsha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pastita Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare I'd like to thank all of you for the opportunity to serve by speaking and I ask for the blessings of all of you so that I may be able to speak something of value. There is a Native American proverb and it goes like this, in each and every one of us, there's a good dog and a bad dog. And the good dog represents virtue, integrity, humility, honesty, morality. And the bad dog, the opposite, greed, envy, lust, anger, these lower qualities. The thing is, this good dog is always fighting with the bad dog. And the one that wins is the one that we choose to feed. So here we have Indra. He is in the highest position in the material, hierarchical sense, king of the heavenly worlds. Yeah, we see that he's not free from these lower qualities. If we examine his previous activities, there was a time when he was cursed by a sage because he couldn't control his inner lust. You know, to the point where he actually acted on that lust. He had this inner lust, and then he acted on it. And he very, very offensively, he acted on that lust and he actually offended the sage, which in turn cursed him to have a thousand something. And, you know, it eventually it became eyes. Let's not go into too much detail. We have another pastime of Indra where he couldn't control his anger. He wanted he wanted the worship of the Rajvasis, the sacrifice to Yoga of the Rajvasis, but Krishna impeded that. And for seven days continuously, out of great anger, he showered rains and thunders, thunders amongst the Rajvasis. And we, we're seeing here, he's also not free of lust, I'm sorry, of envy. Maharaj Prithu is trying to perform this Yagya and in every way he's trying to impede the 100th horse. So this is, is interesting because 
his envy was to the point where it overwhelmed his intelligence, his mind, his senses, to the point where he was willing to sabotage the devotees offering to the Lord. And we see that this is actually like the most unattractive of ugly things when we may have some inner lust, but we cannot maintain it within and it manifests externally, or we have some inner anger, or we have some inner greed, or some inner envy. And when, when we see, like when people actually act on the basis of the envy, or uh, these other things, that it just <coughs> brings out the most ugliest out of them. You know? Therefore, we should be very conscious to always try to feed the good dog. We all have that conscious choice. They say that first make good habits, and then those habits make you. I see, the thing is, we can choose, you know, whatever choices we make, we become further drawn to act like that again. So if we act in an immoral way, if we choose to feed the bad dog, then in the next opportunity when a situation like that arises, we're just that much more addicted to acting that way. So we have to be very conscious to always choose the good dog. This karmakanda that is mentioned here, we don't follow. And the four yoga systems Krishna mentions in Gita, three of them lead to higher realizations. Karmakanda just leads to material enjoyment, elevation to the heavenly worlds. Therefore, a devotee has no interest in karmakanda. There's a story His Holiness Ranath Maharaj shares as we all know that he was a sadhu as a youth, he's a sadhu now, but in his youth he was a wandering mendicant. And so he's traveling about India, and he walks by a temple, and uh, here's this person, and they're having such a very jubilant, radiant festival, and they're worshiping Ganesh, and this worshiper, he was very sincerely praying to Ganesh, crying in so many tears. And then Ranath Maharaj asked him, Why, what is the celebration? Why are you crying? And then, and then the, the person shared, I have a new business that I'm trying to open, and I need Ganesh's mercy for material prosperity so that it may flourish. So this is nonsense. We don't take any joy. We know that Krishna is the source of the demigods. Therefore, we just approach Krishna. But we also do, we do worship Ganesh on the level that he's a devotee. Even in the nectar devotion, Prabhupada says like this that we should pray to Ganesh so that he removes obstacles on the path of bhakti. So that's there. So today is the second day of Kartik, and I thought perhaps we could speak a little bit about Dharmadar Leela. Um, just something I just, just to remind us of the benefits and why we we follow Dharmadar Kartik Mat Kartik Mas. So Kartik. Damodar, the holiest month. This is from Mishkan Desire Tree. Kartik is the best, the purest of purifiers, and the most glorious of all months. Kartik month is particularly dear to Lord Sri Krishna. This month is full of bhakta vatsalya. Any vrata, even the smallest, will yield huge results. The effect of performing a Kartik vrata lasts for 100 lifetimes. Kartik, or the festival of offering lamps to Lord Krishna, Glorifies Lord Krishna's pastime of being bound with robes by Mother Yashoda. Everybody should 
should follow following practices in Kartik month. One daily, offering a ghee lamp to Krishna and sing the Dhammadarastakam, meditating on, on its meaning. Two, one should always remember the Supreme Lord Hari. Devotees should try to do more Harinam chanting, do extra rounds and more kirtan. Three, hear Srimad Bhagavatam daily in the association of exalted Vaishnavas. If possible, all other duties should be given up in favor of hearing the scriptures from sadhus during this month. It is most beneficial to recite and read Gajendra Moksha Lila Stava from 8th Canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, which teaches complete surrender, dependence of the Supreme Lord. 4. Eat only for Shad. 5. Daily recite Shishashtaka of Sriman Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and meditate on its meaning. Read the commentary on Shishashtaka by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Daily read the Upanishads of Srila Rupa Goswami. Daily offer a lamp to Tulsi Devi and pray for eternal residence in Vrindavan and eternal service to the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. The four parikram circumambulations of Tulsi. Make nice offerings for Krishna. Devotees should observe the festival of Anukut Giriraj Govardhan Puja. 9. Associate more with devotees. 10. Practice Brahmacharya, celibacy. 11. Perform austerities. And then there's just a few more things on the benefits of Kartik Mas. Following an ex our excerpts from some scriptures, Puran is describing the glory of the pious Kartik month. If somebody performs even a little worship of Lord Sri Hari in this month, he offers that, that devotee his own abode. If somebody burns a lamp in the temple of Lord Sri Hari, even for a short time in the month of Kartik, then whatever sins he has acquired for millions of kalpas, one kalpa equals one thousand yugas, are all destroyed. A person for the entire month of Kartik eats only once a day, becomes very famous, powerful, and heroic. A person who happily reads the Bhagavad Gita in the month of Kartik does not return to the world of birth and death. Of all gifts, the gift of a lamp during the month of Kartik is the best. No gift is its equal. The pious result obtaining, obtained by bathing in all holy places and giving all charities is not equal to one tenth millionth part of the result obtained by following the vow of Kartik. Sure. Of all gifts, the gift of a lamp during the month of Kartik is the best. No gift is its e equal. So, just two days back, just two days back, I was um, invited to a devotee's house for prasadam, and then I gave a short talk. This is just the day before Kartik, so I gave a talk on a little bit about Dhammadar Lila. And at Gorkesh Prabhu and his wife Ananga Priya's home. And then, if anybody knows their son, they have two little ones, Rinda, and then the son. She's the daughter, and then the son, Mukunda. So before the talk, I had asked, I had asked Ananga Priya Mataji, does, because if anybody knows Mukunda, he can be a bit mischievous. Hare Krishna Prabhu, nice to see you. Uh, um, I said, do you ever feel like you want to bound Mukunda to a wooden grinding mortar? And then she burst into great laughter. <laughs> and she said, I know exactly how Mother Yashoda feels. I have complete empathy. So in Dhammadar Lila, we we see that he's being mischievous. He's stealing butter, but Mother Yashoda, out of great concern, is trying to discipline him. So she tries to bind him to wooden grinding mortar. But Krishna is the supreme personality of God. In he is Aham Sarvastya Prabhava, Matasarvam Pravartate. He is the master, the lord of all material and spiritual creations. But he is controlled by his devotee. 
So seeing Mother Yashoda's frustration, he agreed to be bound by Krishna and by Mother Yashoda. Because the thing is, one who has bhakti possesses Krishna. Therefore, he does not give it very easily. But Mother Yashoda has that bhakti, so he's, he's owned and controlled by her love. But these two, every time she tried to bind, bound Krishna, it was always two inches too short, right? So one inch represents, as you all know, Krishna's mercy. The other inch represents a devotee's endeavor. Krishna's mercy is always there because he is the well-wishing father. He wants nothing for us than us to, to grow and go back to him ultimately. Harishikesh Prabhu. Nice to see you Prabhu. What a nice surprise. Mm. Therefore, His mercy is always there. Generally, it's ourselves who kind of get away of receiving the mercy by our own lethargy, our own lack of determination. Krishna's mercy is always there. Take charge. We have to prove that we want it. The other inch represents a devotee's endeavor. We have to want that mercy. Srila Bhakti Thakur explains these three things will guarantee us the full mercy of Lord Krishna. Those three things are Namruchi, Jivdoya, Vaishnav Seva. Namruchi, trying to, we should be really aspiring for a taste for the holy names. Like everything that we do, when we read scriptures, we're hearing the philosophy, we're hearing from devotees, from scriptures, is all meant to really give us the realization of our position in this material world. So a truly elevated person understands that I don't come to the association devotees because of some spiritual entertainment. I don't hear some talk because of spiritual entertainment. I don't chant because of some spiritual thing to do, some fun thing to do, but they see that this is, they really feel a deep and great necessity for chanting. That this is our very, this is our lifeline. If we don't have this Nam Sankirtan, if we don't have the association of other devotees, then we're implicated to material consciousness. This is the actual reality. Srila Prabhupada, when he would go before the deities, he is a Paramahamsa Vaishnava. We will look before Radha and Krishna and he will pray to Radharani and devotee asks, why are you Prabhupada, why are you, what are you praying about? I'm praying so that I don't fall into Maya. Prabhupada can't fall into Maya, but yet he's praying like that. So what is our position? Who are conditioned souls? When it's time for Kirtan, it's, it's time for us to come before Radha and Krishna. This is Krishna Consciousness. If we're actually gaining a taste for the Holy Names, for the practice of Krishna Consciousness, the deity is just not there. Radha Krishna is actually there. They become more present and our relationship with them becomes more personal. And therefore our devotion should be deepening because we're seeing this is the greatest opportunity we're going to serve Radha and Krishna right here, but when we're in Maya, we, everything just kind of becomes dull. Everything just kind of becomes the same. Everything just kind of becomes the routine. And we do things without any genuine enthusiasm. It's just what we do. But a Krishna conscious person is enlivened in each and every transcendental activity. So we're here, we're here in Shrima Bhagavatam. But this is our life and soul. This is the spotless Purana. Two, 
Jeev Doya. A devotee actually having attained this this faith, this taste for chanting Krishna's names, actually has a desire to share with others. Because he's actually gaining the, these qualities of a devotee. Compassion. Paradukha dukhi. Real compassion means to actually have deep empathy, sympathy for others. So how can a Vaishnav live when other people are suffering? He feels their suffering and he does everything in, within his power to reach out and try to share Krishna consciousness, expose people to Krishna consciousness. Because this is the only thing that's, most, that's worthwhile in this world. Vaishnav Seva In the Puranas In the Adi Purana Krishna explains That in all creation In the material and spiritual worlds Nothing is more valuable To Krishna than his devotee And he takes a devotee's happiness Greater than his own happiness And when we try to serve Krishna's devotees he preferred that we serve Krishna's devotees than him to be served. Therefore, we should really you know, take the heart and you know what that really means. The quality of our interactions. You know, how we're, how we're really trying to fill the humble servant of each other. The quality of the service that we render together. The quality of service that we render together. Offered it to the Prabhupada. And really trying to interact in such a way where it gives nourishment, fulfillment, and faith in Krishna to care for one another. Just a few days back, I went for the first time to visit Her Grace Vaikuntha Murti Mataji. And I didn't know much of her. Her Grace Kanchavala Mataji had, had recited her offering to Srila Prabhupada the day of Vyas Puja this year. And I was thinking, oh, there's a Prabhupada disciple, and she's ill. I haven't heard of her since then. I want to visit her. And it just so happened that finally, just a few days ago I was. And for the past 11 years, since her bodily illness debilitated her, she has been bedridden. She resides here in San Diego, in the Claremont area. And her Grace Kanchabala Mataji, being such a caring, exemplary God sister, each week for 11 years, she has been there by her side visiting her at least once a week. Even to the point when she used, by Kunta Murti, see now they, they live just a few minutes from Madhu Sudan Prabhu's house. Kanchabala's Mataji's home is only just a few minutes from Vaikuntha Murti's Mataji's. But before, it was some distance. But still, Kanchabala Mataji would still, with great determination, endeavor to serve her. And she told me as we were leaving that only so many people come to visit her. one or two and I was thinking here's a Vaishnav she's in her last years of her life and this is her time of 
Okay, this need. Only one or two people are visiting here. There's a saying, Brahma Tamaraj says like this, where there's the greatest opportunity to serve. Where there's the greatest need of service, it's the greatest opportunity to serve. But Kuntamurti is, she's probably a disciple. She gave the best years of her life, her early youth. And helping Srila Prabhupada spread Krishna consciousness. And spreading Krishna consciousness. And back then it was no easy task. Like now Ishkan is established. We're kind of just like riding on the sacrifice and hard work of so many disciples. So many devotees. But then it was like the pioneering days. Where devotees really had to endeavor. It was a time of great opportunity. So Vaikuntha Murti, she was there, um, and she's for many years serving the Los Angeles temple. But I think, you know, we we owe we owe it to our our seniors, especially like we have to in every way really imbibe a deep feeling of gratitude a deep feeling of appreciation. Because if it wasn't for these devotees, where would where would this kind of be? Where would our, our salvation be? And Srila Prabhupada said that his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, was not an ordinary spiritual master. He saved me. Likewise, so in this Ranat Maharaj, he's not just some guru, since he's my life and soul, he saved me. It's because of all of these devotees' efforts that we have what we have today. So we should try to serve Vaishnavs. We can do more. We can visit her more. Just yesterday, we, Madhusudan Prabhu came out of his way to come so that he can give, uh, take a garland of Srila Prabhupada to give her you know, we should give you, we should be giving you Srila Prabhupada's mercy and um in various ways like that. In this way, you have to do these three things. Namruchi, Chief Doya, Vaishnav Seva, we attain the Lord's mercy. So this is something that we should all strive for, especially Vaishnav Seva. We should Understand that caring for devotees is not something that senior devotees do or or the leaders do. We should actually feel and understand that caring for devotees is the responsibility of each and every one of us to interact in such a way that gives that enriches each other's faith in Krishna consciousness. And when that happens, when we take the responsibility to heart to look after others, Krishna just showers us with mercy. And we become wise beyond our years of practicing Krishna consciousness. Even two, three years, if you're serving like that, Krishna is just so pleased. And he just showers such high realizations and, and taste for Krishna consciousness. So we should really endeavor, aspire to create more of a culture of care amongst, amongst each other. Thank you. Are there any comments, questions? Would anybody like to share their realizations? Oh, I forget to mention, she was like, she was, I was so impressed by her level of Krishna consciousness. Her body was completely paralyzed, she could not even move. But she was just so joyful, cheerful, 
she was this transcendental to the pain that she was experiencing. And she has such great vivid memories of pastimes with Srila Prabhupada. I was very impressed. Anybody else like to share any comments, questions, or realizations? Is can you get the mic just so that the online viewers can hear? No, no, sorry, one second. No, it's okay, it's okay, but at least from here. Then there's a few devotees who listen online, no worries. become like this um, we develop this mentality um, Krishna because he says these things uh, um, for those who meditate on me those who worship me with full um, full faith and conviction uh, I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have um, so when we make these plans as you were discussing um, part of it uh, well, an essence that I got from what you were saying was really uh, doing, extending ourselves to do the needful in terms of taking care of uh, devotee care and um, another point that you made. Mm-hmm. I forget exactly what it was. But mm-hmm. um, uh, yeah, just this idea of uh, plan- making our plan for becoming Krishna consciousness so big um, mm-hmm. that we will become uh, saved in that way. So anyway, that just reminded me. Our desires to be Krishna conscious for sadhana and to advance. Our desire to spread Krishna consciousness will manifest externally, just as you're saying, right? Plan making, we have to have plans. You know, what is our routine? What are our commitments? You know, what are our goals? And a devotee, a devotee who really wants to, uh, has so much devotion, he, he wants to give the greatest offering to Krishna. And there's, there's one picture of, this is from like the 1990s, of two devotees. And they have, and this is the time when the expansion of book distribution was, it was just blowing up. Like our society was exploding in that region, and um, there are two devotees of a large stack of books, and then there's a huge billboard behind them. It says "Think Big." You know, 
really try to be innovative, try to spread this book distribution uh, to as many people. But surely, these um, you know, things like that is like practical things like that is of a great benefit if we can apply them. You know, how to time management. You know, effective planning. Regulation, diet. So the devotees should consider all these things. I like to think of how devotees should be like Olympians. We should really feel that we want to be champions for Krishna. Strict sadhaka sadhus, Krishna bhaktas. An Olympian, 100% all throughout his entire day is mapped out. And there's no deviation. He doesn't fall for his senses. And when it's time to eat at a regulated time, he, f he eats at that time. He eats the same meal. He's doing the same activities, the same training. And he's reading at the same time, you know, training at the same time every day. So it's, a devotee should also operate on, on an exemplary level of of living, you know. So yeah, definitely. Plan making essential. Time management essential. Diet essential. So. Anything else? Okay. Thank you all. Gantaraj Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai.